much for coming tonight. Uh, I'm Kate Stewart. I'm the mayor here in Tacoma Park, and I want to thank you all for spending your Tuesday evening with us. Uh, in particular, I want to thank Dr. Pollard and the staff at Montgomery College, Casey Anderson from uh, Montgomery County Planning Board, and uh, other folks from the planning board who you'll hear this evening. Um, the residents, all of you who live in Tacoma Park or in Silver Spring, I know I've met some of you from Silver Spring, some of the students in the area and young people, thank you for spending your Tuesday night with us. Um, my colleagues on the city council and the city staff, thank you all for coming tonight. Um, tonight, we begin to lay the foundation for moving forward in our relationship with Montgomery College. Um, tonight is an important night for us to begin a meaningful dialogue with the college to talk about what their plans are and how we can inform their plans for building and renovation as well as the vision for the uh, campus here in Tacoma Park. We look forward to working together so that the college can meet its goals, its academic goals and its enrollment goals and we as a community can make sure that we preserve the residential and historic character of the neighborhood near the campus. Those are our goals and we're going to talk a lot tonight about our goals and what we want to move forward with. Um, tonight, I really ask um, for your patience as well. We've spent a lot of time, as Councilmember Kovar can attest to when he speaks, um, really working with the college and their staff to think through this series of meetings as we move forward. Um, tonight, we get an hour and a half uh, to start the conversation. It is just that, a start. And we felt it was very important to make sure we had all the stakeholders here, all of you here, to walk through some very important information. For some of you, this is going to be a lot of background and things that you know very well and may even know better than some of us. <laughs> um, but we thought it was important to get us all on the same page, to then present some information, raise concerns, raise questions that then will shape our meetings to come. So we don't expect to solve everything tonight or even cover everything tonight. But we have planned on how we're going to move forward and different ways that people can plug into this process. Um, so with that, thank you again for coming this evening. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Pollard to say welcome to you all. Thank you, Mayor Stewart, and good afternoon, no, not afternoon, evening, uh, everyone. I'm delighted to be here uh, because I know it is not about uh, hearing from me at this particular point. I would join in with the mayor and saying thank you uh, to the phenomenal teams that we both have the pleasure in working with who actually made uh, this evening work and the series of things that have planned. Uh, much of it will be revealed as we go along, which I'll be experiencing it with you. In addition to that, I'd like to thank each and every one of you who've come out, important stakeholders in this conversation, and looking forward to a continued dialogue as we move forward. With that, I'll turn it back over to you, Kate. Thank you very much. Uh, so now I want to introduce um, our facilitator. Um, we felt it was important, um, the college and the city, that as we move forward in this, um, we agree to a mutual um, facilitator, have somebody to help us go through this process. Um, and I think that was a, a good idea. Um, and so uh, this is someone who he'll introduce himself, um, is fairly new. Um, to Tacoma Park, not completely new, uh, but so yes, um, I, and I did welcome people from Silver Spring when I did my opening remarks. Well, the folks who st um, set up the meeting is a partnership between the Tacoma, city of Tacoma Park and the college. So we are, we're building that partnership together um, there are many stakeholders, and I welcome all of you here this evening. Uh, this series of meetings is being put together by the City of Tacoma Park and Montgomery College. So uh, we've planned the meetings. Um, we spent a lot of time thinking about, one, holding the meeting here, uh, what the invitations look like, uh, who is mailing those out. And so there was a great deal of planning um, that went into this. 
And I just want to say thank you very much to the staff at Montgomery College for all their work in working with the city staff in putting together this series of meetings. Um, so I'm going to let turn it over to John now to walk through how we're going to do tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. <laughs> thank you for coming again. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. John Antonishak, and I'm the, uh, the neutral facilitator. All right. And let me just give you a, a quick background of of where I've come, come from. Uh, I spent a, a great career with Montgomery County Public Schools, from being a teacher to a district administrator, and I used to teach at Springbrook and Paint Branch, so I know the area very well. And I have been in this uh, community or in this uh, county for 30 some years and so forth. So I, I welcome the opportunity to be your facilitator for the next three meetings. And with that, uh, I want to go over with you the objectives for the conversations as well as, as the agenda for today and how we're going to go about doing that. All right. Uh, so let me start off. Everybody has the agenda. Hopefully you have one in your possession. If not, just share it with somebody. And I wanted to go over the objectives that the, the city and the, uh, the college came up with. And we have vetted these. And it, it's, it's important that these are what the conversations are all about, right? It's to renew relationships with the college and the community. We've always had a relationship, but what we want to do is get it going again, all right, and enhance it and improve it. The other one is to ensure all voices and stakeholders have the opportunity to be heard. And also to provide a full sharing of information. We want to be as transparent as possible with everything that we can. Right. We also want to offer a forum to inform and facilitate future college planning so you have an opportunity to share your thoughts and comments, as well as to help inform and provide a foundation for the building design plan process. And the last is to balance the needs of the community, the neighbors, the students, and be fiscal prudent. Right. Large objectives. Right. Are we going to accomplish all those tonight? No, all right. but that's what the three conversations and maybe more that we'll need to have in order to accomplish these. All right. But today is the kickoff. Today is the opportunity for us to be able to hear and listen and also speak about what we feel is important. So with that, I want to show you what the agenda is going to look like and how we're going to go about doing this. All right, we just have the, the welcome by the mayor and the president. Working together is the part that I'm doing right now. And what I want to be able to do is share some more information with that in a second. And then we're going to have four presentations, five presentations, four with setting the context to provide a background of information. Not all of you have the same knowledge of the history of the college, the history of the city, what the things are, are going to look like. And so what we want to be able to do is have everybody be on the same page. And so from the four, three organizations, the Montgomery, uh, Montgomery County planning from the college and also from the city will have presentations on that. Right. After that, you will have the opportunity to have conversations or to be able to share your thoughts and comments about the information that you heard and also about the future. Now, that's going to be our biggest struggle. How do we get everybody to be able to speak all at one time? We're not going to be able to do that. All right. But we will be able to get as many as we can, all right, be able to voice your thoughts and, and comments. And if you don't have the opportunity to stand up or you don't want to take that opportunity, you also have the blue cards with you. Right? That's where you can also write down some of your other thoughts and comments, and we'll collect those. We're actually going to have you post them on the white sheets before you leave so that they are public and everybody can see them as well. And if that's not enough, we'll also have a web link on the city's uh, website for you to, and for those who are not here, to provide more comments as well. All right. The little white cards that you had, the index cards, that's going to be used at the end of the meeting so that you can give us an evaluation of how well or what you think the uh, improvements for the meeting could be. All right. Does that work so far? All right. And then we'll have the next steps. What are we going to do with all this information? We'll share that with you. And then we'll have closing remarks by the mayor and the president again. So let me give you my, my role. 
As I said before, I'm a neutral facilitator. My interest is in the process of deceive and to be able to get to desired results. I have no vested interest or, or stake into what the recommendations or the conversation ends up being. But I do have a strong vested interest in making sure that everybody has the opportunity to be heard and have the opportunity to provide feedback. All right? Does that work? Okay. Thank you. So far, so good. So here's, I'm going to ask that we have some working agreements, right? Or some people refer to them as ground rules or protocols or behaviors or whatever you want to call them. But this is what we're going to call them our working agreements. One is to listen with an open mind. All of us come with a different perspective. Whether you're a student, whether you are a community member, a faculty member, a representative of another organization, we all have our own thoughts. So come and listen. All right, be respectful for the other points of view that you hear. Also be positive and be courteous to each other. These are your neighbors, these are your colleagues. Be brief and meaningful when voicing your opinion. One of our challenges tonight is to be able to get as many people up as we can to be able to share their thoughts. And so I'm gonna ask you to try to concise, uh, concise what you have to say in two minutes. All right, I know there's not enough time but we want to get as many people up as we can. So we're going to have a two minute limit on what you are able to uh, comment on. And then also honor those time limits and your commitments. The next to last one is an important piece as well. All right, seek common interests rather than trying to dig into positions. All right, we're looking at what is best for the community, what's best for the city, what's best for the college, what's best for the students. And so that's what we're here for, all right? Those work for us? All right. Thank you. And we can come back and revisit those if they don't. They're not in stone. They're there for uh, help us guide through, through tonight and the next meeting. All right. So with that, I want to go to setting the context. We, as I said before, we have several different presentations to provide you with that information so that all of us can have the same information and hear it all at the same time. So we'll have uh, Mr. Casey Anderson from the uh, planning board of the county. He'll go first. And then we'll have uh, the college and then the city. And then we also have a councilman in Kovar will say a few words as well. Okay. Mr. Anderson? Okay. Yes. Uh, how will the comments be recorded? Oh, good. The question was how will the comments be recorded? What we will do is we're going to take all the comments that we hear today and all the ones that we receive in writing then all the ones that we receive on a website, and we'll collect all those and we'll make them public. We're recording it. Yes. Great question. Thank you. All right. Briefly, question. Yes, ma'am. That's what we're going to filter and try to find what we can do with all of this information. But first we have to gather the data and then we'll go from there. All right? Here's your picture. There oh. You Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm uh, Casey Anderson. Thanks very much to Mayor Stewart, uh, the City of Tacoma Park, and also to Dr. Pollard and Montgomery College for inviting uh, us tonight. I'm, uh, I'm uh, Casey Anderson, the Chair of the County Planning Board. Uh, the County uh, Park and Planning Commission, the headquarters is just downtown Silver Spring, uh, just up the street up on George Avenue a little ways. And we have uh, land use regulatory authority over most of the county except for Rockville and Gaithersburg. Uh, the city of Tacoma Park has some limited uh, land use authority. Uh, they can uh, weigh in on decisions that we make and the county council uh, also has to defer to Tacoma Park in certain cases. But in, in for purposes of what Montgomery College is doing, it's a little bit different because as a government agency, neither the county government nor the city of Tacoma Park has regulatory authority over government building projects, whether that's a police or fire station, a library, the State Highway Administration, other government agencies, National Institutes of Health, for example, in Bethesda, we don't have authority to tell them what to do on their on their property. And similarly, we do not have regulatory authority over uh, Montgomery County's 
uh, Montgomery College's projects. The county council, of course, does that influence uh, the college's budget, so it's not as though they have no influence whatsoever over what the college does, but there's no direct regulatory authority over their land use. So our role in this kind of situation is advisory. But having said that, uh, there's a state law that says that government agencies that are uh, proposing real estate projects are supposed to uh, consult with us and, and uh, take our uh, input seriously, and we take our role seriously in trying to help government bodies build the best uh, projects that they can, that are respectful of the communities around them, that are uh, both accommodating of compatibility with things like residential uh, homes that are nearby, but also serve the county's broader uh, land use and transportation planning objectives. So we will be involved in formally reviewing any uh, buildings that the project that the college proposes, uh, even though we don't have the uh, right to veto those, we will be providing uh, input and interacting very closely uh, with the with college. And also, members of the public and uh, the city uh, can work with us to try to uh, jointly uh, collaborate with the college to hopefully produce the best projects that, uh, that, are, that are possible. I want to talk a little bit about the substance of what we would think about if we're reviewing any uh, project in this uh, part of the county. Um, you'll see this uh, graphic just illustrates just how close downtown Silver Spring, the college, and uh, Walter Reed are. Uh, a lot of people forget, I don't know about you, I sometimes feel, especially because I work uh, in local government, sometimes I feel like I'm a tourist when I go to Washington, D.C. I'm really sort of a, just a, a prisoner of Montgomery County sometimes. And that means that I don't get into D.C. as much as I, I used to. And so I forget about some of the things that are going on in D.C., even things that are just across the line. And I, uh, so I, and I doubt that I'm alone in maybe not paying as close attention as I should to things that are going on in Shepherd Park or down by Walter Reed. But everybody should be aware that with the Army uh, moving Walter Reed's uh, medical care functions over to Bethesda, that creates a huge uh, redevelopment opportunity for the District of Columbia. And they have gone through uh, many years uh, process and have had some stops and starts in that. But at some point, we're going to see a very different uh, uh, very different uses and activities, uh, not to mention probably new buildings, uh, at Walter Reed. In addition to that, we uh, expect the Purple Line to be built, and the District of Columbia has plans for a streetcar line running up to Upper Georgia Avenue. Now, I do expect the Purple Line to happen, hopefully sooner rather than later. I think the streetcar is more of a long-term uh, proposition, but I, uh, those are transportation projects that will have very important implications for this part of the of the Georgia Avenue corridor that we're that we're talking about. So uh, we also have uh, not in our work program yet, but I expect uh, to propose that uh, that the county council uh, direct us to to prepare a new master plan for South Silver Spring at some point in the not too distant future. At that point, we would be looking at the land use and transportation issues. Uh, basically uh, south of Wayne Avenue to try to take advantage of the momentum that's been created with redevelopment of downtown Silver Spring, connect that hopefully to what's going on in the District of Columbia with Walter Reed, and ideally that would meet in the middle and we'd have a much more vibrant, enlivened uh, corridor that would uh, serve everybody's interests, both, both in D.C. and in Montgomery County, and specifically uh, this area around, around the college. Um, I want to close by just getting you all thinking about some of the issues that we would be looking at as we'd review any project. And I, I, I'm going to skip over some of the more obvious ones. When people come to us and say, we really want you to ask this developer or direct this developer, whether it's a public entity like the college or it's private development, don't put a tall building right next to my house or you need to be concerned about traffic or driveway access that's going to interfere with the transportation uh, access that I have to my neighborhood right now. Those are important issues and we will address those. But I want to try to introduce you maybe to some of the things we'd be thinking about that are in the nature of broader uh, planning objectives. Um, this is a precedent uh, from Tidewater Community College in uh, Norfolk. And what this sh I hope to show you here, although I don't have a lot of time, is that the buildings of, the, of this 
uh, community college are oriented around Granby Street, which is this street uh, that's sort of right through the middle of the buildings that's been revitalized recently, and also to take advantage of this transit line that you see sort of on the backside of the campus. And when you look at the buildings uh, at this campus, you see that many of them are oriented in such a way as to provide pedestrian access or vehicle access through the campus to make it more, in planner speak, I think you'd say that to make it permeable, to, to make it accessible, to invite uh, traffic, whether it's, whether it's pedestrians, bicycles, cars, transit vehicles, to come through the campus in order to, so that the campus will interact more with, with uh, the community and be knitted more tightly into the fabric of the community that uh, surrounds it. And I think for Montgomery College, that's particularly uh, relevant. There's another picture, one of these buildings that fronts on that main street that I was talking about. And planners also like to use words like, you know, engage with the street. What, what does that mean? Well, you can see this building here on, on the corner has windows, entrances at the ground level that, that create a certain uh, level of interaction between what's built and the, and the public uh, street that's right in front of the of the building. So these are some of the things that we'd be thinking about if we were talking to Montgomery College about a new building is how is this going to interact with uh, the neighborhood? Not just in the sense that it shouldn't do violence to the residential neighborhood that's next door, but also how can it be an asset and build on what we hope to achieve on uh, Lower Georgia Avenue? Here's another example from Tidewater of the buildings framing this access point for pedestrians through the middle of the campus. Um, you might want to think uh, in the coming weeks and months about other college campuses that you've seen and what works and what doesn't. So, you know, GW is a good local example. You might even want to take the metro down there or drive down there and look around and see what that means to have an urban campus, what works and what doesn't. Howard University has seen a lot of development right there on Georgia Avenue recently, and you can see how that's influenced uh, LaDroit Park and some of the residential neighborhoods around it, I think generally in a good way. But you can make your own judgment and, and think about this in the context of what you'd like to see from Montgomery College. That's certainly what uh, we'll be doing. I won't talk to any of the rest of these slides because I've probably already have gone over my time. <laughs> But thank you for listening. We'll be around, and our staff is here. Margaret Rifkin's here, who's one of our very able staffers. Gwen Wright, our awesome planning director. And we're all around to take your questions uh, later. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Before I uh, turn it over to Dr. Pollard, I also want to recognize uh, uh, Crystal Ritz, who is the senior uh, legislative aide for the uh, Councilman, uh, County Councilman Reamer, uh, so welcome. All right. Is there anyone else here that I have did not recognize? I apologize ahead of time. All right. Thank you for being here. All right. Dr. Pollard. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. I'm back, and I have 10 minutes, so I will honor that and move expeditiously, but try to make, I think, some salient points and provide a context uh, for some of the work of the college. Uh, I want to again start off by saying thank you uh, to each of you for being here this evening. And I appreciate the opportunity to share uh, this perspective with you and to participate in these campus and community conversations. As the community's college, the very, very foundation of the work that we do is rooted in the work that we do with the community in which we live, work, and serve. So let me say this outright, and I'll say it multiple times throughout my presentation. Uh, the college and I want to be a good neighbor. Uh, we believe that we have made efforts in many places to do that, but we also recognize there are opportunities for improvement. So that's a part of the conversations that we're here for this evening. And I need your help in helping us be a good neighbor while also delivering on the promise of a college education to this community here in Tacoma Park and Silver Spring. Let me go on and talk a little bit about Montgomery College. This first picture on the left always gets me every time I see it. The college is celebrating our 70th anniversary this year, and we're celebrating a mission that says we empower our students to change their lives, we enrich the life of our community, and we are held accountable for our results. Back then, we were in Tacoma Park for Morgan Wooten. MC helped him to get on course and to become the winningest high school basketball court coach and also a phenomenal teacher at the nearby DeMatha High School. Today, we're helping students such as Angel 
get to make her move in Montgomery County and to the workforce here. So Tacoma Park was the birthplace of the community college movement in Maryland and it began in 1950. We moved into the Bliss Electrical School at that time. The college has blossomed now into three campuses serving all of Montgomery County and 76% of our credit students attend campuses other than Tacoma Park, Silver Spring. We know that we are the option for locally provided, high quality, affordable post-secondary education. We serve a very critical point in the community as a fulcrum between education and workforce. And the college serves students from all over the county, from Wheaton to Wooten. Every Montgomery County Public High School has students who are enrolled at Montgomery College. A little bit about this institution now is that it, the top feeders are the key eastern and down county schools of which many of you are aware of. And Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus reflects our community, a community that needs a proximity to a ladder of opportunity, a community that is extremely diverse, and a community that also recognizes that education is probably the only thing I know that can pull someone from poverty and give them an opportunity to middle class. We also know that this particular campus, and because of the work that you all have done in helping us shape our curriculum, we have continued to provide programs that respond to the workforce, such as our nursing program, and we have provided workers who have fuel in the economy in such areas as nursing, surgical technology, engineering, cybersecurity, of which there are 20,000 current vacancies in Maryland alone in cybersecurity. And we offer an array of programs to our community. As you know, we have a health clinic at this campus, and we also have our refugee training center, of which the city of Tacoma Park has been supportive of in terms of scholarships for students. But if we really want to address the challenge of our time, the one that most of us spend a considerable amount of time thinking about who do this work, poverty continues to be the number one barrier to a college education. We need to continue to modernize our facilities on our campuses to ensure that our students have access to facilities that enable students to learn and to become members of a community that needs them to contribute to the economic base. Facilities that tell students, I can, I matter, and that I will succeed. And Professor Nash, one of our outstanding math faculty members, says it best in this quote that you're seeing here. And I need more Professor Nash's who will be empowered to innovate and unleash the potential of all of our students in modern facilities. But faculty also need modern classrooms and facilities and laboratories to push our students to this future that we're all needing. I know that many of you already understand this. So again, I'm grateful for your support for the college. The challenge that we have now before us is that we have an aging, extremely aging facility. Our Science South building is 56 years old and our Science North building is 38 years old. And if these pictures don't exemplify, there's a whole lot of duct tape, a whole lot of prayer, and a whole lot of truly innovative faculty who are trying to make spaces accommodate modern learning needs and doing it in facilities that do not rise up to meet them where they are. Blair High School is a key feeder to this particular campus here at Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus. We must have laboratories that are at least as good as Blair High School. I would also offer to you that we must have laboratories that are comparable to what we provide at our Rockville campus and at our Germantown campus. To me, it is a social justice issue. It is ridiculous that we have students trying to become the next scientist, the next engineer, and they're studying in spaces that don't reflect what one needs in order to do that. As the college contemplates how to drive student success, we build on a bedrock of principles that many community colleges do across the country. We began with an array of stakeholder feedback. We continue to seek feedback and input among various stages. And at each stage, opportunity for feedback is offered and provided. The facilities master plan, which a lot of people have great interest in, 
is a conceptual framework that is required by the state of Maryland. The main purpose of that facilities master plan is to ensure that we have a plan to manage enrollment and have facilities that are there to meet the mission of the college. We take seriously our need as an institution to balance the needs of our students, our neighbors, the community, and also fiscal prudence as to how we do this. The campus's extension plan, if we would go back to the first uh, one that I'm aware of, campus um, plan back in 2002 to 2012, this was a plan that was envisioned to modernize the original campus of Tacoma Park, so of the T Tacoma Park side of the campus. Thus, we have succeeded in renovating two buildings. We balance the needs of the community and the students with our P3 or Pavilion 3 renovation and also the Commons building, which many of you are very familiar with. The college included the modernization efforts and specifically addressed new math and science buildings in that 2002 master plan. Two buildings to replace two existing outdated buildings, Science South and Science North, and we were to phase the projects where each building is being replaced and demolished. The plan evolved from 2006 to 2016, the second uh, master plan, and it, enhanced, it was enhanced with the likely structures that would be necessary. Steel replaces two buildings, Science South and Science North, likely would have a four-story building, and that because we would put the HVAC uh, for a building on the rooftop, and it was still a phased project, and it was going to take eight years to complete that project. The adopted plan for 2013 acknowledged the community's concerns that we received about the plan that they saw there. So then the plan that you see now envisions one new building, not two, completed in one phase to reduce the construction time from eight years down to four, replacing Science South and Falcon Hall, we also needed then, because we needed width, we had to, in order to lower the height, we had to build width, so we had to replace Falcon Hall as a part of that plan. The plan envisions eventually also replacing Falcon Hall with a health and fitness center on the campus or nearby. So a little bit about our next steps about this. How do we continue and how do we plan for a dialogue for operations and planning? We have committed and asked the city of Tacoma Park and interested parties to have community conversations about these issues. Today is the first of these. Uh, we would form an advisory committee that would be composed of the city, the college, neighbors, and the community. We would create a new timeline for deliberations of future master plans. One of the critiques that was offered is that people didn't feel they had enough time to contribute to that so that we would provide three of those meetings whenever we revise the facilities master plan. We would hold those two, me two months before the state submission deadline and that we will hire a professional facilitator to engage in that process. How do we engage in the design of the building to ensure that we can balance the needs of our students, the community, our neighbors, and f f uh, fiscal prudence? We would consult the community the college has agreed, as it was a part of the budgeting process for last year, to run charrettes. This is a process that we also deal with our Nunley Student Services building. We would have intensive engagement and problem-solving processes through the charrette. We would lead, uh, have it led by architects who could actually have experience with working with residential locations. That we would have extensive stakeholder input and participation. We also would continue our work with the city of Tacoma Park with consulting with the mayor and the council. We would also meet any stormwater or tree regulatory environments that we have to respond to as a part of that process. And as Casey mentioned earlier, the college always does participate in the mandatory referral process where we, there is a series of public hearings, staff review, a commission oversight as to the plans the college may ever move forward with. Let me end with the place I start. I want, I plan, and I will have the college be a good neighbor with the work that we have to do in this space. We have a history of doing that, and I believe that we will continue to do that. But I also need your help in helping me balance our collective needs. 
There are multiple needs that have to be responded to here. Help me empower our friends and our neighbors in Tacoma Park and Silver Spring to change their lives and to create a ready workforce that our county so desperately needs. Students like Janelle Malone, a Blair High School graduate, he's an ACES student, second generation college student who struggled profoundly until he was able to find our Hillman Entrepreneur Program. He is now active in student council and student senate, will be graduating this May and attending University of Maryland College Park. He also met plans to run for public office. <laughs> I mentioned her earlier, Angel Gatchu. She's a Blair High School graduate, an ACES student, a first generation college student, Career experience opportunity helped her understand the options that lay before her in healthcare and health sciences. She's been elected to the student government and founded the college's STEP team. Angel says that, quote, Montgomery College not only is an affordable school, it molds students to become community leaders. And last but not least, Luis Rosales, another Blair High School student. He was a dreamer from El Salvador. He was an ACES student and could not afford to go to Montgomery College because he could not get federal financial aid as a result of having been a dreamer. One Montgomery College scholarship changed his life. He graduated and earned the prestigious Jack Kent Cook Scholarship from Montgomery College, which provides financial assistance for him to complete not only his undergraduate but graduate education. And he is now at the Madonna School of Business at Georgetown University. His life was changed <laughs> because he had a community college to come to. I thank you for the opportunity to give this context. I hope I honored the time that I was allotted, and I look forward to the continuing conversation today. Next, we'll have the uh, mayor come and speak on her behalf. Perfect. Thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Powers. Thank you, Casey, uh, for those presentations. Uh, we'll go through this pretty quickly um, so that we have time to hear from all of you. Um, since we do have folks here from all around the community and not just in Tacoma Park, um, just a reminder, we're, you know, the city of Tacoma Park, we're 2.4 square miles, about 17,000 residents. Um, and we have a number of institutions actually in our community. In addition to Montgomery College, we have a Washington Adventist University, Washington Adventist Hospital. And our goal in the city is really to make sure that our community, our residents, our city government, and all our institutions are working together for the benefit of the entire community. And I will say, as Dr. Pollard mentioned before, about the nursing programs that they have a partnership with Washington Adventist University in addition. So building on these partnerships um, is key for us. Um, and as we said, we've been neighbors since 1950. You know, in Tacoma Park, we always like to claim that we're first for a lot of things, and we love to claim <laughs> uh, first about community college uh, here. Um, and so, you know, the campus is in a designated historic area. Uh, I think many of us are aware of that. Um, the opportunities and challenges that presents for us, I think Casey outlined um, very well um, what other, some of the other communities have considered as they looked at what does it mean to have a college campus when you're in a neighborhood, particularly a historic neighborhood. I'd like to acknowledge the shared goals we do have with Montgomery College. Um, as Dr. Pollard mentioned, um, a number of the students, um, i just like to say that before Angel was at Montgomery College, um, <laughs> she um, and still does spend a great deal of time in our recreation center um, and was one of the students who helped us put together our community conversation on youth success. Um, and so we have, we want, we work together on a number of issues. Um, the work that we're doing in the city on racial equity, which I won't go into tonight, but I hope everyone is uh, following what the city council is doing on racial equity. Uh, it's a very important initiative, and we see the college as integral in us moving forward in that area. 
In addition, providing services and opportunities and advancement for youth, the City Council has started um, doing scholarships for young people who live in our community to attend the college. Um, responding to the needs of our immigrant community and basically enhancing the quality of life through expanded educational and cultural programming and really seeing this as a partnership for our entire community. Um, but it's good to have, I think, in any relationship, it's good to have in place um, process and systems and guidelines that we're all clear about and we know how to follow. Um, and we know what to expect from each other. And that's part of why we're here tonight, is to sort of reestablish um, some of these processes um, in our relationship. And so some of the things that we have already in place uh, is an agree a legal agreement from 2002 um, that talks about the relationship the city, uh, the county executive, as well as Historic Tacoma is to have with the college. Um, we already had talked about, Dr. Pollard talked about the college commitment moving forward. Um, and as Casey Anderson mentioned, there is the mandatory referral process when we get to the point about talking about specific buildings and what they're going to look like. Um, so to go into the rest of the presentation, uh, I'm just going to turn it over now to my colleague, Council Member Kovar, who's been working very hard on these issues uh, to talk a little bit. Okay. Hi, everybody, and thanks for being here. I, I do want to thank the mayor and city staff and Dr. Pollard and her staff and everybody who's here from Silver Spring and from Tacoma Park and uh, whoever else I, I mentioned. And uh, I see we have um, County Council Member Mark Elrich has come by, and so maybe we can get him in a moment to say a, to say a couple of words uh, as well. Um, just a few... Um, Thoughts. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the, on the PowerPoint, but just where I think we are. Um, I want to say, first off, the neighbor idea is really important to me. We've been neighbors for a long time. We have to stay being neighbors. And um, this isn't, for me, about uh, the mission of, of the school. Um, I think I've mentioned before my daughter went to Montgomery College. My wife and I have been involved in the, in the scholarship program. I believe the Foundation Director Carol Romerud's around, who got me to do that. And uh, as, as the mayor mentioned, the city has now also started a scholarship program. So we support the mission of the college. Uh, through the community's active involvement, through the city staff and, and the mayor and, and the city council, we've worked our way up to the point where we're in what I consider to be the start of a better consultation process. We weren't there before. Um, a lot of things went through that. Uh, about 18 months ago, before I was even on the council, we had a uh, resolution passed by the city calling for consultation. I've testified before the county council and, and before the board of directors of the college, and we've had a very vibrant exchange of letters, and we've gotten to this point, and I think now we have a better consultation process is starting today. There have been some disagreements, and I put them in two categories, policy and process, and they're interrelated process is we need the consultation. Without that, it's hard to really be the kind of neighbors that we're talking about. Policy is what the specific buildings look like. And they're intertwined. I think uh, when Dr. Pollard mentioned earlier, the college modified the proposal in the most recent master plan to respond to comments that were made within the community. There were comments made within the community, but I don't think we had a chance to do the kind of give and take that we hope is going to happen from this. So I think uh, that's an important point. And if, you, if we go through these three meetings, it's not just let's have a nice discussion. We actually have goals we want to get to. And if you saw the joint statement that the um, mayor and the uh, college president put out earlier, it was meeting, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but it was meeting the academic goals of the college and uh, preserving the, neighbor, the residential neighborhood, residential character of the neighborhood. Those are the goals we want to get there. This just isn't a conversation, it's a conversation toward achievement of, of some goals. And uh, so let's just see here, I'm going to do that. So this talks about the um, legal agreement that the mayor mentioned. That came in 2002. At that point, there were concerns about the level of consultation. I think the most important piece on this, I'm not going to run through all of it, but the third bullet at the bottom, 
early and transparent involvement of the community. We're trying to get that now. I think the key is, though, you can't just go building by building, and this is where we're going to have some uh, significant conversations. We do need to have a, a look at the, the broader campus and how a given building fits into that, and I think that has to be part of the discussion. These discussions are meant to be dynamic, iterative. So today, people have an opportunity to speak. We'll send in all the comments. Those comments, working with John, I don't think I... I don't think I thank John, thank you John, but he'll help us then figure out how to take the key issues that people have mentioned, plug those into the next meeting, and really delve into them. That, I think that's what we want to do. And these may not be the only meetings. I think um, we mentioned before, I think John mentioned it, I believe Dr. Pollard mentioned it also, and if you look at the Montgomery College commitment page, um, I think the key is on the top one, the potential for additional meetings. There are some neighbors who may even say tonight, they would like to see a smaller working group. I think Dr. Pollard talked about a, a version of that too. And I think, honestly, to really get into the sort of rolling up your sleeves kind of situation to deal with specific design elements, a huge meeting like this may not be the place to get to that. So after these three meetings, I personally would like to see us get to some sort of um, working group. There's no guarantee we'll get the result we want. I understand people may be skeptical. This is a process that we're in now. So mandatory referral was mentioned. Casey talked about it. It's the, um, the, uh, the, the process that the county has. I'm not going to go through all of that either, but the key is that mandatory referral applies to specific buildings. And just to wrap up, if we have the best possible process on each specific building, and then we get to the end, and we've done a great job in every building, but we've never stepped back and looked at the whole campus, then I think we're going to be missing something. We're going to look up, and we may like the way it looks, we may not, but we won't have looked at the whole arrangement in a comprehensive way, and I think that, to me, is essential. So what we're going to be doing, what John talked about, was saying which things we think are important and need to be delved into more deeply. I personally think, in looking at what Dr. Pollard presented, that that second version of the building is bigger than we need for the area and isn't within the residential character. So I personally would say, and maybe this is the first item for future discussion, is that it would be preferable from my perspective to look at going back to the two, uh, replacing the two science buildings, which I agree do need to be replaced. I've, I've toured the lab and not having the Falcon Hall piece, which gets much closer to the residential area. That's what I would like to see. I think as part of that, Let's look at other areas. This is where we talk about the bigger vision. Could components of that building be placed elsewhere? I know there are people in the neighborhood who have strong concerns about that. Um, lastly, and then I'm going to recognize the mayor for next steps. Lastly, I just want to say we're right in the middle now, and Mark can talk about this, uh, Council Member Elridge. We're in the middle, though maybe in the early stages still, of the county council working on its budget. And that puts this set of meetings at a crucial point. And so the second thing I'd like to throw out there for further consideration is with the next meeting, not until May 9th, I think it's important for us to have some commitments that between now and then, we don't get so far down the road in what the council is delivering that we lose our chance to influence and make some changes potentially to the math science building. So uh, that's what I would like to see included within this and that may involve discussions that would take place focused discussions between now and May 9th, depending on the timing. So now I'm going to go back to Mayor Kate Stewart. To All right. Oh. Yeah, just good. Oh, Thank so you. we're going to do next steps. Uh, That's coming. Oh. All right. Yep. Okay. Thank good. you. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Mayor and uh, Mr. Cobra were just saying the next, some of the things that we're going to be able to do is and I mentioned it before, is that you'll be able to submit written comments online as well. And here's the website, and we'll give it to you again so you have that, uh, but just so you have that knowing that that's coming as well. All right? So we had... <laughs> what? No roses, put it back. Oh, all right, I'm sorry. I thought you were writing, okay. Thank you. You don't write that fast? Yes, right?
Okay? All right, I will. That's why I was asking. What's the last digit? I. I. We'll make this available again. So what we want to do is give you the opportunity to provide some input and share your thoughts. And then I have some guidelines on how we can do this as a process, because it's going to be the difficult part of it as well. We're trying to get as many people up to speak as, as we can and so that we can capture all this. But before I do, I just want to get a quick show of hands uh, of who's in the audience, just so I have an idea as well. How many students do we have? All right. Let's applaud our students just for being here, Art. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how many uh, city uh, residents do we have? All right. Thank you. Former students? All right. Catherine? How many do we have from the, uh, the Silver Spring? Thank you. From the county? From the faculty from uh, Montgomery College? And who did I miss? Parents. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, thank you. And I did that because what I want to be able to do when we get comments, I want to make sure that we can get comments from all of our stakeholders who are here. All right, so we get perspectives from everybody. And so here's my, my guidelines. What I'm asking you to do is limit time for everyone to speak. We have limited time. We have only about 30 minutes. I know that's not enough time for everybody to say something. All right? But we don't want to be here till midnight either. All right? We also have the opportunity to be able to write uh, comments on the blue sheets and also do it online. Uh, two minutes to share. I'm going to be your timekeeper. All right? If you can do it under two minutes, great. All right? But I will also ask you to conclude what you are stating uh, within those two minutes. I'm going to ask too that we solicit a variety of topics and stakeholders so that we can get a breadth of perspectives. And state your affiliation if you're a parent, if you're a faculty member or a student or something, so that we know who's speaking, what perspective you're, you're showing. As well as we're not looking for solutions at this time. Right? Nor are we asking, getting answers to questions that you may have. This is a voice for you to be able to share your thoughts and, and comments right now. I know it's not much of a conversation, is it? It's one way or two way, right? But that's the beginning of what we have to be able to do today. Meeting two, three, and all the everything else in between are the conversations, right? And then also is, if you agree with somebody who is speaking, I'd like you to signal that, yeah, I'm in agreement with that as well by just holding up your blue card at the end. I'm going to ask you, how many agree with that? And this kind of gives us a way of knowing how many people are supporting that, that agreement. And if we can perhaps try to eliminate some of the duplicate topics until we get our first round so everybody gets to speak, that would be ideal. Does that work? Yeah. All right. And written thoughts on the half sheets. Like I said, you can have those, write all your thoughts. You can have more than one thought as well. All right. Okay. So we're going to have roaming microphones. All right. Instead of you having to stand up and move over and, and use a lot of times, we're going to have two gentlemen who will have the microphones and you'll be able to speak for your two minutes. And you're addressing the audience. You're not addressing anyone in particular. You're just sharing your information with everybody who's here. Okay? Show a hand. Who would like to go first? All right. Let me take the middle one here. All right. Yes, ma'am. All right. You got that, Mike. Oh. I'll be there. If you'd stand and state your affiliation. And then your comments, please. Yes, my name's Julie Schmidt. I'm a City of Tacoma Park resident. I live in the neighborhood uh, surrounding the college. And um, I want to, first of all, to thank everybody for, for being here and for participating in this. Um, the concern I think I would like to raise is one that I heard Casey Anderson articulate earlier, specifically how does the... Uh, a, the uh, changes to the college, the construction at the college, uh, how can we do it in a way that addresses the college's mission and addresses the needs for updated classrooms and technology, but that does not do violence to the historic neighborhood surrounding it? I mean, I thought the way that 
uh, that was stated was really important. Um, I think the issue of what, what do we do to en engage more with Self Silver Spring in the development of the Georgia Avenue corridor is an important question. But you know, th I think these are concerns that need to be addressed as we're, as we're going forward with the process. Um, and I think also, you know, I'm concerned as well as what is the process going forward. I thought Peter Kovar raised a really good point about forest and trees. You know, we can look at one building at a time, but that doesn't really look at the overall plan. It doesn't look at the overall fabric of the campus and how it's knit into the fabric of the community. And I think that has to be at the forefront as we're doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to this side. Let's get a student this time, if we may. Stand, please. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Oh, oh, thank you. All right. Before, hold on. Thank you for reminding me. I get carried away sometimes. All right. Uh, how many agree with the statement that was right. good? Right. Thank you very much. We're not going to count them. We're just going to look at. Thank you, Paul. Check. 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 Test, 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 yeah, check, 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 check. Here we go. I got it. Good afternoon. My name is Andrew Gatcher. As you guys have seen this slide, that's me. Uh, I am from Montgomery College, and I live in the city of Tacoma Park, and I'm also part of Man Up, uh, making a, U a united people. Um, I am here to speak um, for my fellow, my fellow student body, as I am a senator of Montgomery College. And I, and I think I speak for almost all the students that are majoring in STEM and life science and say that we need a new building. Not because it's big down, no, but because we lack the equipment to just pursue, um, pursue our dreams. Because um, so they had biology and we came into class today to take an exam. And uh, we were supposed to take a lab, but we were lacking on um, the microscope. We don't have enough microscope to have a, a lab ex exam or just a study. And that's not fair to not only the, the teachers, but us, the student. And I do believe that you want to have kids to grow up being, you know, leaders and learning this stuff so that we can become, you know, the people that is going to lead the future of tomorrow. I, I think I, I speak for everybody here, right? Okay. So um, I just wanted to. <laughs> I just wanted to say that because it personally affects me because I want to become a doctor in the future. And why will be a doctor if they don't know how to use a microscope? Just saying. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Right. Agreement with her statement? All right. Thank you. Let's go to this side of the room. Anybody have a question on this side? Yes, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Adam Pollock. I live down the block from Montgomery College, and I support that the college be able to actually pursue higher density to the extent that that's needed to serve its students. Um, like a lot of people uh, who live around here, I come from uh, privilege and fortune, and I think it's acceptable f to make sacrifices in the form of a little bit more traffic or a few more shadows in order to enable the college to, in a cost-effective way, serve the region, and I think it's really important from a value standpoint that we help facilitate uh, the training of people, many of whom don't have the resources that we do. Thank you. Thank you. Vision. Agreement. Thank you. All right. Let's go to the back of the room first. All right. Yes, ma'am. Wait for the mic. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Eileen Fitzgerald. I live in the neighborhood around the college. Um, my major point is that I think the college has such a phenomenal opportunity to be the community college of the 21st century. I really appreciate Mr. Anderson's presentation and thinking very differently about this college versus Germantown and Rockville. I've been on all three of them. They look very different. And I just really urge the college to think about um, not just thinking about a building, like we went quickly from a master plan to a building, but how does this work? How does this work with all the transit we have? How does it work with South Silver Spring? Every, I'm sure every person in this room believes you should have a good microscope, absolutely. I think we should do that, and that doesn't mean that we can't also think about how this is a vibrant, 
part of the community for the next 50 years. So that's the main point. I live in the, uh, a historic home that was part of the Bliss Electrical School. When I bought my house, I knew that one, it had to look like that for the rest of you know, time. And I was, we bought into the fact that we were part of this community. By definition, my house was part of Montgomery College. So we just want to see the college kind of buy into that too. I wouldn't want to, you know, we wouldn't knock down our house down and put a totally inappropriate use there. But really it is about trying to think uh, in a future way here. Thank you. Agreements, show the card please. Thanks, Brent. All right. So we had a lot of community. We had a student. Do we have another perspective? Parent. All right, parent. All right, let me come back. Oops. I'll come back to it, yeah. Parent. Right. Parent. Okay. Let me get, I'll come back to you, please. All right. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Monica Ettinger. Um, uh, you might recognize me. I'm usually at these meetings for Sheila Hickson, and it is day 71 of session. So I have been listening to a lot of testimony <laughs> for days and for days and for several nights as well. But this was important enough for me to come even after a really long day. Um, my daughter, and so I'm not here to represent her. Although if I do a really great job, feel free to contact her at Sheila.Hicks at house.state. Okay. Um, but I'm here because my daughter Claire was a student at MC. She's a tw uh, 12 graduate of Blair. She decided she didn't want to leave. And I think it's part of the reason I wanted to come and stand up is because my skin tone is a lot fairer than a lot of the students you guys see around here at MC. And my daughter is even fairer than I am. And I think it's important to realize that there are all kinds of kids who go to that school. That science building, one of them was built the year I was born and one was built the year I graduated from co high school, high college, co high school. So we all understand that that's important. I would just say to you that, okay, I'll give you the quick rundown. She did her 60 credits, she's at Towson, she's going to be graduating in December. Towson, not Towson, I learned today. She's gonna be graduating in December with a degree in sports management. She started at MC at the Tacoma Park campus, did one semester planning to be a physical assistant and, said, and changed her, man, her, changed her uh, major to sports management. Works for me. Hopefully this summer she'll be working for the Orioles. Um, feel free to give me a call. Want some tickets? Uh, so it's so we understand the importance of that. I also want to just make one quick statement. Thank you've been every, everybody's been thanking the people who put this meeting together, but thanks all of you who showed up. You're so far being so much better behaved than the people I have been listening to for 71 days. <laughs> So, and one last little parting shot. Remember, I think they said it earlier, no one's gonna get everything that they want. Just be open and please work together because we are a fantastic community and we need to show the rest of the county, the state, the country, how you solve issues in a community and that you do it respectfully. So thanks again for all of you for coming out. Thank you very much. Blue cards show. Right, I, I said I'd come back to you, all right? Then I'm coming over here, then I'm coming up here, all right? You're welcome. I know you're close. I didn't Hi, Dolores McDonough. I actually have multiple stakes in the stakeholder. Um, I live within a mile of the campus, have been in Silver Spring for more than 26 years, um, have a 20 plus year career in historic preservation, and I'm a parent of a Montgomery College student. So I have an interesting perspective on a lot of different issues. And so, you know, the two that I would bring to bear is um, historic preservation is, you know, in my DNA and in my soul. Um, a big part of historic preservation is also evolution, too. So it's not necessarily sticking a neighborhood or a building in amber, um, it's allowing that neighborhood to breathe in a new time. Um, uh, the second thing I just want to say too is that I share Monica's comments about working together as a community and I would just add with some alacrity as well too. I know there have been some conversations to date. They may not have been at the level that everybody wants, but I hope everybody here commits to those conversations in a timely manner because our kids really can't wait. None of those kids can wait. Um, and so as part of our commitment, I hope we really commit to being respectful quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Blue cards. All right. Thank you. All right. Let me go back to this side, and I'm coming back here. All right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Dale Barnhard. 
Um, I've lived in Silver Spring, walking distance from the college for 32 years. I've been using the swimming pool for probably close to that, maybe 30 years. And uh, the reason being is because it's allowed me, it's, it's affordable and it's allowed me to stay in shape. So I think studying health and being healthy um, go hand in hand. So I'd like to emphasize the fact that even though the Falcon Hall is going to be torn down, that it's got to be replaced. We have to consider the gym, the weight room, the swimming pool, even the tennis courts. But we also have to emphasize a use of it. We have to stimulate an interest in using those facilities and making use of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. I said I promised to go first. All right, and I'm coming back. All right. Yes. Sir. All righty. Oh, no, did it, oh, um, one sorry. second. Did I get blue cards on that? Mm -hmm. All right. No. Thank you. Remind me. All right. I just keep, all right. Thank you. You may go there. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Susan Shulkin. I have been in the neighborhood in Tacoma Park for 21 years, directly across from Montgomery College. Um, so I am a neighbor. Both of my kids went to the child care center there. I've had one employee who went to Montgomery College, and I will probably have a kid who will be there as well. And I walk my dog there every night, so this is part of my neighborhood. Um, so I had actually had two points to make. One was from reading the master plan, preparing for this meeting, um, and there was a line that really just leapt out to me and I wanted to make everyone understand I didn't think it was exactly true and that line was new development proposals on the Tacoma Park side of the campus are nonetheless still opposed by a vocal minority of neighbors who insist that the college shift all development. I mean, there are a lot of us here tonight and I don't think any of us are saying Montgomery College go away, but I think we are saying please be respectful of the neighborhood around us. Please be respectful of the historic nature of that neighborhood. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Uh, blue cards? Right. I promised her, then we're going to come to this side. All right. One here, then we're we'll coming okay. over. Okay, very briefly. Um, my name is Catherine Hill, and I've been a resident here in Tacoma Park for about 20 years now. And I actually live a little bit closer to City Hall than um, the college. Um, and actually, I want to make one, two comments, one personal and then one sort of from a professional point of view. Um, personally, I wanted to mention that I've been involved in the community meetings that helped result in this City Hall being built. And I have to say that... Um, I'm, I'm impressed. I hope that this process will go more quickly than that process did. I think that we, we ended up in some good places. It was very difficult. People had really different perspectives. But I will say that the conversation made a difference and really did help us uh, good, get to a good place. We just needed to go there maybe even faster. Um, from a professional point of view, I just wanted to add that um, I've done a lot of work on the issue of getting diversity in science, technology, engineering, and math. And I know we're all in for it, right? Everyone's for it. But it's going to take a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. It means we go out of our way. And we want to get women and we want to get people of color into STEM. We need to make the community colleges system strong, up to date, and affordable. So this is not going to happen if we don't go out of our way. It's not easy. It's not cheap. If we want to have diversity, real diversity, in our science, our technology, our engineering and math fields, it's going to require something from all of us. And I'm really happy to see this process going forward. And I'm, I'm really pleased with the tone that I've heard so far. So thank you. Thank you very much. Blue cards. Yes, hold on. All right, blue cards. All right, young lady in the back there. Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Thank you. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Dr. Yvette Butler, and I'm actually a longtime Silver Spring resident um, for over 25 plus years. And I'm speaking on behalf of a parent. My daughter attended Montgomery College, Tacoma, Tacoma Park, and also um, she could not really do everything there because of the facility. And she had to go to Rockville for a lot of her classes. Now, we live right up the street. And one of the things I wanted to say was that. 
you, the Union College is celebrating its 70th anniversary. We had to think about the historical perspective, but we also had to think about how it needs to come up to speed to where we are now. We can't stay in the past as we have been. And Tacoma Park is very historical. The college is historical. We can think about ways we can develop the community college with keeping a historical perspective in mind. But it really needs to be overhauled, and especially the math and science. I've been in that building, and let me tell you, it's when Dr. Parler said it's dub take, dub take, she, she's, she, there's things falling apart. I mean, I went in, there was floods on the ground. And here it is, students having to go in there and try to, you know, try to learn. It was kind of difficult. Um, so as a parent, as a long-term community resident for Silver Spring, uh, I really would like for everyone to think about moving ahead, advancement, um, as long as keeping the historical perspective, but really thinking about where we need to go, especially with these young people and giving them a cause they deserve to go to. Thank you. Blue cards, the support team. Right. Uh, before I take another one, all right, uh, do we have a faculty member from the college that we'd like to speak? We haven't heard from the college. All right. right in front, then I'll make sure we get... Good evening, my name is Jane Smith and I am a faculty member at Montgomery College as well as an alumna of Montgomery College, class of 76. Any friends? <laughs> anyway, I just wanna make a few statements, mainly as a faculty member. And that is, um, first and foremost, Montgomery College is one of the most notable cornerstones in this county. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And our students actually deserve the best education and available resources. After all, they are paying customers and should receive excellent quality services, including state-of-the-art facilities. Our Montgomery County public school students who are entering Montgomery College look forward to exploring their future opportunities. It is such a disservice to them to come from high schools with modern facilities and great laboratories only to be thrown way back in time with archaic tools and technology. New buildings will replace old buildings that have a combined age of 94 years. And these new buildings will give a facelift to the campus. The residents, most of you, will enjoy uh, a well-maintained campus that is aesthetically pleasing and it will enhance the overall environment and add value to the community. I could go on and on and on about the importance of providing current technology and the infrastructure to support it, but I know you all realize that and know that. Um, please know that our students are our future they are an investment, and they are so worth it. But let me just say this one last thing. Quickly, please. Okay, right. okay. Picture this. The new math and science buildings will have modern classrooms and labs equipped with latest technology and will produce the finest engineers and scientists in the nation. And Wait, just think. You there. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you. Blue cards. All right. So let me ask, is there a stakeholder group that we have not heard from? No. All right. We have not. Let me go to this gentleman here first, please. Uh, Dr. Stewart, right behind you, first. All right. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Elias Waldo. Um, uh, I am an Ethiopian, and uh, Tacoma Park has been uh, the home of uh, Ethiopian citizens for a long time and Montgomery College became the hub of the Ethiopian students as well. And as we see it now, uh, from, the, uh, from the outset, I think uh, the college has been uh, challenged with the, with the future. And to fulfill that requirements, so to fulfill that need, I think you know, the, uh, uh, the addition or the making of the uh, Tacoma Park uh, campus uh, to be more viable and ready for the future, I think that is everybody's interest uh, to think about. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, other stakeholders? Yeah, former students. 
All right, former student. All right, yeah. Captain, go ahead. Whoops. Here we go. And I don't drink either. Uh, am I hurt? Uh, my mess. I, well, first of all, my name is uh, Pete Hartsuck. I'm a commissioned officer in the U.S. Public Health Service. Don't let the uniform frighten you. I'm a pacifist. Uh, and I work at the NIH. I've been working in AIDS since the epidemic be began. It doesn't make me feel good, but my, my old boss was former Surgeon General Coop, and he was a good guy. And I worked on the Surgeon General's AIDS report with him. At any rate, I went to Montgomery. It was called Montgomery Junior College then. And all I wanted to do tonight is give you a different message, and that's to say thank you. Thank you to Tacoma Park. I went to kindergarten in Tacoma Park at the old Silver Spring Intermediate School, which provided the gym for the Tacoma Park campus, okay? And 13 y years after that, I went to Montgomery Junior College. So it's, life comes full circle. But this, the college, is a crown jewel in the county. It is something that gives and gives and gives and gives, and I can't tell you how many doors it opened up for me and many other people. And instead of wasting money going to a Poison Ivy League school, <laughs> I came, I, I, wanted, I, I didn't want to waste my folks' money or, or mine. Education's already subsidized by the taxpayers, by the parents. You've got a bargain but you want to make sure it continues to be a bargain. But again, all I wanted to do was say thank you, especially to the Azalea capital of the world, which I think you still are, right? Tacoma Park? Right. And it's where the Seventh-day Adventists were born, too. I, I remember that, too. So at any rate, and you gave a home to Montgomery College. Thank you. Thank you. Three minutes for the blue cards. That's right. Silver Spring. Silver Spring. Where? All right, here's a Silver Spring. Long time Silver Spring resident, live four houses. Yes. I, I live four houses from the campus. Okay, so and we, um, my concern, and we were talking about respect here tonight, so this is a theme I've talked with Dr. Stewart uh, quite a bit about. Um, parking enforcement, okay? Better parking enforcement, okay? There, it, it, I live in Silver Spring. There's no parking enforcement on our streets, Islington, New York, uh, Chicago, in the evenings when the, ma when the majority of the students are on campus. Okay, I have no driveway. My neighbors have no driveway. We have no parking space. We have no place to park. Okay, we cannot park in Tacoma Park. We cannot park at the end of, uh, on, on Fenton because it's metered. Please, when you do your plan, and do something about parking enforcement. Thank, Thank you. you. Good. We have time for just one more, unfortunately. All right, just one more. All right, I'll then come back. Wait in the back there. Yes, ma'am, in a white. Last one. Hi, I'm Alex Fairfield. I'm a biology teacher here on campus. Uh, I've been here for 13 years. I'm a retired NIH scientist. And I have a couple of concerns about our students here, just to really reinforce how much we need this building. I am very concerned that when our students transfer to University of Maryland or somewhere else, they are going to be required to know techniques and or how to use equipment that they've never seen before. And they will be at a distinct disadvantage to other students uh, in, their, in their class when they transfer to a four-year school. Secondly, you have to realize this is really a great location because we are so close to the Tacoma Park Metro. I get to take my students to the Smithsonian Museums, to the Botanical Gardens, and to the zoo to reinforce what they're learning in biology class, which you actually can't do from Rockville and Germantown because it would just take too long to metro down. So um, every semester, I, I have 72 students, and usually only about six of them have been to the Smithsonian and don't even know that it's free. And we can really open up their eyes because of our fantastic location here. Secondly, we do have the new buildings at the Rockville campus and at the Germantown campus. The majority of my students do not have cars. Now, we have a van that will go between Tacoma Park and Rockville. It's one hour in each direction. The majority of my students, because I, I survey them every semester, work about 20 hours a week. So the two extra hours they need to get up to Rockville, take their class, and then come back again, 
is really an inconvenience because of child care needs or taking care of other family member members or job needs. So um, although those facilities do exist higher up in the county, most of our students really can't pop up there and, and take advantage of it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We got some good news. We got some oh, blue show, uh, cards first. Thank you. Would you be okay if we extended another 10 minutes? Yeah. All right, because I would, you know, I was conversing with. So let's get a couple more, if that's all right. All right, uh, from, PTA. from what? PTA. From the PTA. All right, then we'll come back and get some of the residents and, yeah. all right. Hi. Hi, my name is Therese Gibson. I'm a 22-year Tacoma Park resident. I'm the past president of Montgomery Blair High School's PTA, and I'm the current Blair coordinator for, okay. um, for the Blair cluster with PTA and as someone who's working very hard currently to maintain academically rigorous programs at Blair High School I really want to express my appreciation to Montgomery College for committing the enormous resources it takes to revamp this college to make it what we need in South Silver Spring and Tacoma Park it means the world to us thank you thank you all right Blue card shows. All right. Let's go here in the middle. All right. Get a microphone. Okay. I'm uh, <clears throat> Lorraine Pearsall. I am vice president of Historic Tacoma. I am a co-signer of the 2002 agreement that you heard about, a legal agreement with the city and the college and Montgomery County on collaborating appropriately on changes to our district. We have a college that is nestled right in and in, actually in a, a national register district. That makes it extremely important. When it was designed, it was designed as a low-scale residential campus. In fact, the college has celebrated that it had an urban campus on Georgia Avenue, which we all agreed with, but it, Tacoma Park remained a low-scale urban campus that was compatible with its national register status laid out in the 1890s by B.F. Gilbert, his third edition, we consider it a pretty significant place. And our questions, you know, we're all for education here. I went to a community college. I believe in good, good buildings. The question is, where do you put them? And how do you do this in a way in which it doesn't impact the the historicity of our neighborhood, which we love and cherish. When we saw we were, the, the recent master plan, which was just presented to us as it was going out the door, we were really shocked. And we were shocked because they were tearing down Falcon Hall, which had been pr proposed to remain and be uh, renovated. Uh, and they were moving its functions over to the chemistry laboratory area and then suddenly moving the chemistry laboratory area right across the street from our houses. And that presented a lot of concern because that's a commercial use and that is not the place to put a laboratory right across the street from a park and right across the street from residences. Can I ask you to conclude please? Uh, two minutes. The, the issue here is the college ne has a simple solution. Leave Falcon Hall alone and go back to Science North and Science South, which it always proposed to change. Science North is farther Please away prefer. from our residences. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Blue cards, who supports the comment? Thank you for the comments. All right, let's, uh, anybody on this side, let's go back to the young lady in front. Yes. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Kathy Stevens. I live in Silver Spring, a few blocks from the, from the campus, and I've been a student at the campus. I swim at the campus, walk my dog through the campus. I used to work at Montgomery College with students from all three campuses, so I have a, a long, deep connection here. I want to bring up two points. I've been trying to listen a lot tonight because I think there's a lot to learn in the room and I very much appreciate when I'm hearing are a lot of questions about people about how do, how do we manage change and our 
culture, our environment, our neighborhoods, our homes, everything is changing. And I think it's very relevant to talk and listen to each other about where our fears stem from that. And there was a point made about things aren't just put in amber, but they are made to evolve. And that takes risk on both sides. So I appreciate everybody being willing to take that risk. I run a nonprofit in Montgomery County that serves over 15,000 adults each year, teaching English mostly to our immigrant uh, community members, many of whom need to come to and want to come to Montgomery College. On Dr. Pollard's slide, it indicated the adult learners in the community, and that is extremely important to me that they have really phenomenal science uh, facilities here, and so therefore I think that's important. I can't help but see this through an equity lens. And in managing change, it's really incumbent on all of us to take a really hard look at ourselves okay. and our communities and ask ourselves, is this a, it, whatever we're looking at, in this case buildings and access to facilities, are we providing equity to everyone involved? And I would challenge us to say, sometimes we may need to relook at what we think is kind of our right and what we have to know that we need to provide other things to provide equity in our community. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, agreements with the blue card? All right, let's go over on this side. Yes, sir? I'll stay here and we'll get you. Uh, my name is Bernie Aronson. Um, I'm a little bit troubled by the conversation in the sense that I think we left these young students with a, the wrong impression. I don't think anybody in this community is against modernizing these science laboratories and, and wants to stop them. Excuse me? Can you hear me? Okay, well, is that better? Was, Should I start again? Can you give me back my time? Sorry. I will. Um, <laughs> you got it. Okay, uh, right. what I was saying is I feel badly for these students because somehow they've been led to believe that this community is rising up to stop these science labs. I don't think there's anybody in this community who wants to do that. I think most of us treasure uh, community colleges. We know they're a gateway and a pathway for the most vulnerable people in our society, including immigrants, which this country unfortunately is currently slapping in the face. So that's not the issue. The issue is where's the best place to put these and what takes into account the, the residential quality of the, of the community. And also the fact that our kids and grandkids play in a park that's going to be 10 yards away from a, a chemical facility. And we don't know anything about the hazardous really, uh, risks or anything like that. All we want to do is sit down with the college in a respectful way where decisions haven't been made and see what are the alternatives not to stop anything. So I think this whole you know, boogaboo about the community opposing the modernization of science, which these kids have been led to believe is true, is really a disservice to these children. They don't need to hear that this community is hostile to them because it's not. Thank you. So blue cards. blue cards, we have time for just one more. All right, take it on this side. Thank you, I'm Beth Brinkman. I'm a resident of Tacoma Park for about 22 years. Um, my daughter goes to Montgomery Blair. A lot of her friends go to Montgomery County. My mother worked at a community college in California for 20 years. I think that last comment is absolutely right. I think the question is how, where, and you know, in what form this is put. I think there's incredible support for this. Um, I would just make two comments. One. Looking at the big picture, um, I was involved in some of this back in 2006, and if you just go and look over there, the commercial use is where the storage buildings are and where the parking lots are. And that's where, I, you just see it, it's just such common sense, and it's contiguous over to where the fine arts community is. And then there are those rent or car places, all buildings that are not defined by their location, for example, storage units. So that's one thing. I think looking at that bigger picture, the suggestion that was made is a really good one. Um, but I do think there's great support for the community. The other comment I would make, I just want to put this one factor in there. Um, so I lived on Philadelphia originally um, for 11 years, and then I moved around the corner onto Tacoma Avenue for 11 years. But it was a lot bigger than moving around the corner because I moved into the historic district. And this comment, I bought into it. You know, I can't do things to my house that a lot of other people do. And believe me, everything I want to do costs more money. I, I have to go and get permission. But I bought into that and spent a lot of time and, yeah, financial investment in you know, making that a part because that's a really important part of to, to come up, come apart for the people who live there and not, you know, in Jackie Park and that whole area. It's so wonderful. So 
I just want to remind people that, you know, people who live there actually give up a lot of things too and do really contribute to the community by maintaining all of those restrictions that are on our home. And it's very different than just around the corner where I lived before. Thank you. Thank you very much. Show blue cards. All right. All right, I know we can continue, but we have to stop. All right. And so here's what we're going to do next as for next steps, all right, to move this process forward. And thank you for all your comments and your thoughts, all right. And it's, it's wide and, and broad and, and a mile deep and a thin and an inch deep at times, too. So what we want to be able to do is how do we take all this information and what do we do with it? So what we're going to do is compile all the topics that we heard tonight. And as we said before, it was recorded. So we'll be able to go back and be able to filter all those. And then we'll try to categorize those as well. And then we're going to take the, com the written comment sheets you have, the blue sheets. All right? We want to be able to collect those. And there's two ways in which you can collect them. We're going to collect them. One is you can post them on either side. Just put them up there. They'll stick to the white paper. Or if you want to, just leave them on the table as you exit. I'll make sure we collect all of them. I just want to make sure that they are publicly seen and everybody can see the comments are being made as well. All right? And then, so that was this. And then the third way is, this is the website I showed you before. Yeah. All right. And that you can submit your comments. And I have the April 7th date there. And our next meeting is until May 9th. But what we want to be able to do is get this information as quickly as we can so we can take all that information and look at it and try to prioritize what are the main topics that people want to talk about. And it will also determine how we set up the next community conversation. All right? It may not look like it did today because this is kind of a one-way conversation. We want to have a little more dialogue and so forth. So we're going to take that information. We'll pull the Montgomery College together and the city together. And together, we'll develop what the best format is for that. All right? So that's our current thinking. And then, as I said, our next meeting is May the 9th, Tuesday, in this room as well. So what we want to be able to do is, is have closing remarks by the mayor and the president. And I just, again, uh, oh, one more thing. Keep forgetting. The little white card you have, the index, all right? Here's what I want you to do with that. On one side, what we want to do is what we refer to as pluses. What worked well, all right, for about tonight's uh, conversation? Write any thoughts you have down there. What worked well? Something you'd like to continue doing. And then on the other side of that white card is a delta. And a delta is a Greek symbol for change. What could we change or do differently to improve what we did tonight? All right. And then if you would write those out, then your feedback is extremely important to us because it may not be on those blue cards, but the white cards are about the format. And then if you leave those on a table outside as well, I'll make sure I collect all those and I'll, I'll make sure they're all compiled as well. Fair enough? All right. So to conclude, closing remarks, Mayor? Dr. Polly, would you like to join me? No, you're good. I'm, thank you. <laughs> um, I just want to thank all of you tonight. I know not everyone got to speak, but um, as we said, this was just the beginning. Um, and so I appreciate, again, Casey Anderson for coming, uh, Gwen and Margaret from uh, the Montgomery County uh, Planning Board, and our city staff and the Montgomery College city staff and all of you. Um, it is going to take all of us um, in moving forward. Um, again, and thank you to uh, our county council member, Mark um, Elridge for coming um, and Hans Riemer's office for coming. Uh, this is a process we are all going to be working through together and I appreciate your patience and your respect and your thoughts tonight. So um, thank you and I look forward to more. Oh, sorry, one question. Last word. Huh? Oh, Roland, uh, Roland, I didn't even recognize you. I'm very sorry. Uh, former council member Roland Dawes, thank you for coming. So... All right, everyone, um, go home and go root for the Lady Terps Saturday. <laughs>